God, our eternal mother and father, may your loving spirit fill our hearts. Do a mam and had fragoido, but there's either a spirit cariatis len we in Kalonai. This week, I was sat at home thinking about this Sunday's communion service at Gethsemane Chapel. And I was wondering to myself what passage or story from the Bible would be best to support a message of inclusive communion for all, where none are excluded. And I was struggling a bit to find the right passage. And to be honest, I was hoping for a bit of divine inspiration when suddenly I heard a rustling in the flower bed outside my window. I looked up and was greeted by the sight of a friendly sheep and her lamb nibbling away happily at the flowers. And my first thought wasn't that this was a sign from God, it was panic because my front door was wide open and our puppy Edna would love to be able to play in the garden with some sheep. But once I'd safely locked Edna in the kitchen and went out into the garden to see the sheep, my next thought was, they don't belong here. I'd better get them back to where they ought to be. So I posted a message on Facebook for the farmer to see where they were and be able to come and retrieve them. Job done, I thought. But of course, the farmer didn't get back to me straight away. And so instead, the ewe and her lamb spent an enjoyable 45 minutes munching the grass in our garden and watching them through the window while I worked. It dawned on me that they were actually doing me a favour. They were mowing uh, my very overgrown lawn for me. My first thought had been, they don't belong here. I need to get rid of them before they make a mess. But actually, aside from a few droppings on the doorstep, they've done a lot more good than harm. Hadn't it been a bit arrogant of me to think, this is my garden, they can't just waltz in here like they own the place. Well, were the you and her lamb sent from God to help me choose a Bible passage for our Sunday service and to teach me a valuable life lesson? Well, maybe not. But you never know. What I do know is that it did make me turn to the parable of the lost sheep, in which Jesus tells a story about some wandering sheep to inspire his followers with a very important message. If a shepherd has 99 of his sheep safe, but one wanders off and gets lost, what will he or she do? Well, of course, he or she will go looking for the lost sheep. It's a story about love and caring and about inclusion as well. If we have 99 people in our church, but one person is left wondering alone and lost on the hillside, we've got a serious problem. We need to get out and find them and help them and welcome them in. If our church caters to and welcomes 99% of people but excludes 1%, we still have a problem and we need to change. If a church welcomes white people but excludes black people, we need to change. If a church welcomes well-off people but excludes poorer people, we need to change. If our church welcomes heterosexual people but excludes gay people or transgender people, we need to change. And if our church welcomes people who are our kind of people, but excludes those who are different in any way, we need to change. Sometimes our first reaction to people can be like my reaction to the wandering sheep in my garden. They don't belong here. We need to get rid of them before they make a mess of everything. And sometimes we might feel complacent that 99 sheep are safely gathered in. That's not too bad, really, is it? But time and time again, those who are different or excluded when welcomed in have transformed the church for the better. From allowing lay people access to communion 
to women ministers to welcoming lesbian, gay, bisexual and transgender people. Our job is to welcome and receive all kinds of people into our communion and into our chapel, into our church, to make room for everyone and to look for that lost and wandering sheep, not out of pity, but because of the amazing and wonderful gifts that they have to bring and because they belong here too. May we welcome not 99% of people, but 100%. May we search for the lost sheep and bring them home. May we build the church we dream of, the church of faith and hope and love, where everyone has a place at the table. Amen.